All right, Aquarius. Let's start off with the sun. So you're in Aquarius placement. Fun things are happening. Fun, fun, fun. So first of all, the sun. Let's start off with our sun. The sun is in his last day, obviously, in Leo. It's been the seventh house for an entire month, which would have been contracts, you know, businesses in your life, relationships, like family. A lot of you have been having a lot of family fun time. Um, now, it's things are changing a little bit. It's more of your partner's family rather than your family now, if that makes sense for those that are in relationships. So, for those that are not in relationships, this was in the sun of the seventh house is like a choice that we make in our life. So in the past month, Aquarius says you made a decision, whether it's like internal within you about yourself. Again, this is reflective to each and one of you's like um, a personal sun. So like if you're a Sag, it reflected to your friends or you hanged out with your friends or if you're a Scorpio with a rising, you know, you get it. So. The Leo sun reflects to your own sun, okay? That way you understand. Now the sun is going into your eighth house. This is cool. The sun in the eighth house is not scary. It's not bad. It's something to be worried about. Yes, it's resources, so it does make you think about your money a lot or worry about it uh, because it's always going to be eighth house things. But when, the, when planets are transiting in your eighth house, Aquarius, it's when you soften up a little bit. So Aquarius placements, if you're cross-watching, um, they're going to be softer. They're going to be on some, like, I want to be more outspoken. I want to um, verbalize what I'm thinking. Even though this is the eighth house, why? Because Mars is in the fifth house at the same time. Aquarius placements. So the sun is in the eighth house. You're always used to this around the same time of year. But now that Mars is in here, that's going to be cracking you open a lot more. So expect that shit. More of your personality comes out. You want to have more fun. You want to be with the kids. For those that have kids, by the way. Or you want to tell your lover, like, hey, this is not working for me. I'm going to need you to do whatever the fuck it is that you're telling your par partner because that's what the sun does. So the sun is the ruler of the seventh house and is entering the second house away from me. So it's like unraveling what you and your partner already decide. Or if you don't have a partner, what you already decide last month of Leo season, you're gonna be unraveling it here. A couple of things is that the sun will oppose Neptune, which usually does around the same time of year. You're it's regular, regular. Um, how can that coincide to you? Depending on yours, this could be like a family thing because Jupiter's in a third. So you may have to go take another trip to see family, even though you, a lot of you may have already come from another trip. Uh, a lot of you may have to um, maybe handle some stuff at work. Again, work has you a little bit vulnerable a little bit. Only because Mars is in this transitional state and you're getting eclipsed in these houses. So a lot of Aquariuses may not have a job necessarily if they have Leo placements. Um, but that's okay because you're supposed to be building something for you, my friend. So Aquarius, you are supposed to be building something up right now in your life as a career, as a passion of yours. Um... And that's maybe why you feel a little bit not confident. So when so the sun being in the eighth house will question uh, your confidence a lot more. Um, give me a second, y'all. No. What? Okay. Um, his job just okay. Sorry, I'm reading comments for those that are coming in. I'm reading a comment. A example: We got true. My brother's in Aquarius rising. Rising. His job told him he's done at the end of the month. Yes. Yeah, so a lot of you may be like having changed times. Um. No, it's for tomorrow. Hang on, y'all. Sorry, I got a little pause. Yeah. So. 
a lot of uh, this could be a little vulnerable right now for you, especially in the finances or what to do the next following steps. But not to worry, chill the fuck out, relax, okay? Mars is in the fifth house, so it's gonna bring you some opportunities as soon as Mercury gets the fuck out of the eighth house into your ninth house, which would be good for projects. Maybe you're learning something. The Mars in the fifth house could be you learning some, a new skill. Um, he, you could be learning some type of like dealing with your children or, um, what is it? This is like, like this is a learning thing. This could be like you developing some type of marketing. Like a lot of you could be in a marketing project or let's say you're working on Instagram. This is a great time to market, especially when Mercury goes into Libra, market the hell out of that, whatever the fuck that is. If you are in Aquarius rising. So now let's talk about Mars and Gemini. So I just want to give you some insights about Mars and Gemini and what to look out for. I got some notes for you all, because you know, ah, 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 hello. I'm um, sorry, hang on, let me look it up. Mars, Leo, I got Leo, I got a Cancer, a Kumar, there we go. Okay, so Mars is in the fifth house. So what's the fifth house about? First, the fifth house is children, passions, ideas that you're into. Um, it could actually be children or the opposite. It could be your friends that you start doing a project with. Mars is fucking projects, obviously. If you don't have any Gemini placements, you're in Aquarius, you may, it's still squaring all of your second, fifth, eighth, and 11th. So all of these are financial houses. All of these are gain houses. All of these are about your confidence. So Mars here could be trying to help you with this. May not know where to go, like being confused on what to do next. So Mars in here though, is going to be best if you use it depending on whatever project you want to start or you've been working on. So I would recommend looking at your natal Mercury to give you an idea um, perhaps where to go with this. But some things that I do want you to remember. So Mars will square, like I said, your second, your eighth, and your eleventh. These are unexpected changes happening very quickly financially. I don't know if you're planning... If, let's say you go out with friends because Mars in here will oppose the 11th house. You go out with friends, it may lead you into a loss, basically. So I want you to remember this because one of the aspects that Mars will be doing is onto your 12th house, which is the house of losses. So during this Mars in Gemini, you don't want to do any wasteful spending. Also, this may transform the way you look. Some of you may start changing like your look. Like I already saw Nicki Minaj change her hair. She may not wear more makeup. It depends, because these are like, not necessarily the public image, but Mars does transform your 10th house. So Mars rules your 10th house of public image, the way you look, your boss's career, which is why I was telling you, you're gonna have changes in those places. And Mars also affects your third house of skill set, communication, and your associates. So you may have to stop talking to some type of friend. Or Mars is also opposing a friend. Maybe you're too busy to hang out with your friends and you should be working on a project, not wasting this time. Okay, so, or sorry, let's say uh, the last thing is Mars, these projects that you're doing could be all about recording or in a faraway, like merchandising or like for instance, Mar Saturn is in my eighth house of long-term investment. And today I met someone who does option trading, which means something about my fifth house is about to change, especially my finances, my, my money that I'm saving is about to change. So I'm going to change some type of these contracts. I'm gonna start selling things on my stocks. This is how you're supposed to view these things, okay? Aquarius placement. So I like Mars and Gemini for you. It's good for you attacking or uh, working towards a goal, 11th house. Your Jupiter is trying, all your fire houses, they're trying to help each other, even though unbeknownst to you, it may not feel like it, but it is. So another thing that you may see is for lovers, like those that have been trying to get into some action, you're finally going to get some, okay, Aquarius, you're going to get some dick. Sorry, I may come in in a little time. So, um, yeah, you may get finally some loving for those that have been on a dry spell. 
Um, a lot of your partners may be working with their older siblings or one of your partners and you work or do things with an older sibling, by the way, or a friend, a partner, and you could be doing something with a friend. Um, what else? Let's see. Hang on. We're looking. We're looking. What else is another thing that your, your partner could be? Like I said, I don't think your partner is doing anything bad, Aquarius. Everything seems to be good. It's mainly the kids and projects you guys work together. Some of you may go to a family event. The fifth house is like big events, big galas and crap like that. Another, let me give you some dates. The new moon will be happening in your eighth house. It will be changing something in your daily routines. Um, you may, this is an eighth house, you may have to use your credit cards. Whenever there's transits happening in your eighth house, um, also affecting kind of your sixth house, you will be seeing some like uh, unavoidable debts, like you just can't avoid them. Um, by the way, <laughs> so what else is another thing that I want to tell you? When Mercury goes into the ninth house, like I said, you'll be focusing on some more of the things that you want trying to gain that confidence back or learning things some of you may have to go to courts somehow or on like i said that's that trip that we was i was referring to so yes i'm gonna i'm gonna leave it there for the points on aquarius i'm saving this for my youtube thank you shout out to you watch it on youtube i'm just doing aquarius and i just did aquarius so Again, let me see. I'm going to give you these dates because I wanna, don't want to forget. Uranus. Oh, my God. Uranus is going to go retrograde Aquarius placement. Sorry, I'm picking my nose. Uh, what basically that means is, uh, depending on your Uranus, so, like, if you have a Capricorn purse thing, if you have a Uranus and Capricorn, this is someone from the past. This could be someone that you thought you took a loss in. This could be you literally, some of you may be hitting Tinder, doing sneaky things. This is an active sneak. This is a transformation to your Capricorn house because during Mars and Gemini uh, transit, Capricorn things will be going through a transformation. I'm going to repeat it one more time. During Mars and Gemini transit, Capricorn placements are transforming, letting go, whatever your Capricorn house is. So, like, for instance, for, for Aquarius, this is your 12th house, which could be long-distance things, things that you do in your markets, depending on you're in a business. Like I said, this could be you taking a loss, right, um, that transform how you start acting up on it, your person, like your personality, how you start displaying it. Some of you may have to cut off some, like, not necessarily associates, more like family and you could clash um, some you may have to stop talking to them or reach back out to someone who's from the past let me know thank you another day I want you to write down so we did the new moon is on August 27th I want you to put down September I just want to make sure I get the right day September 15th Saturn will square Uranus so again the Saturn will go back and square Uranus in your fourth house which is your living situation a lot of you just might have had some transition in the living situation. This could be physical as well because Saturn obviously rules your physical body. Um, this, by September 15th, this is great for like new creative start. You, this is actually one of your cardinal houses, so it's starting things for you. Right now, this Mars and Gemini is speeding things up. It's continuing things that you may have started and not necessarily continue. So this is what I want you to know. Uh, you may stop, like again, an older person in your life that you may not. So it depends on what kind of Aquarius you are. So some Aquariuses have stopped talking to an elder in their life, which, for instance, I stopped talking to an elder. That elder may pop back up. Um, some of you changing your environment the, like or the challenges that you had depending on the person is um it could be progressive okay uh what else is another thing it really depends on your karma guys so depending on your karma saturn is laying out this thing so if you're an aquarius and you're having a gay old time and life is blossoming because you're probably under your saturn return that's what it's meant to be 
Um, if you're an older Aquarius and things are kind of crashing, that is what it's meant to be, my friend. You want to develop that house and like grab, this is an opportunity to do your karma the right way for something you want to make sure, like something you want to work on seven years from now. Especially for those that have like Uranus and Sagittarius, you, my friend, this is a date that you want to pay attention to because Mars will be opposing this. So this could be like, um, well, it's not right now, but this could be, like I said, more like strange things happen in the streets. You know, this is the 11th house. You change a goal of yours or maybe it delays. A lot of Sagittarius have been seeing delays, especially if you have Uranus in Sagittarius. That's a Saturn in Aquarius. I'm talking about Aquarius placements, but it all correlates. Also, I want you to pay attention if you're an Aquarius rising and you have a Uranus and Scorpio, this is directly to you, my friend. Like, this is literally your axis of the Holy Trinity. So if it's not happening to you at work or at home, it will happen to you physical or someone that you know, personal. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. I'm going to leave it out here for Mars and Aquarius. We're going to come back and do Pisces placements. Uh, let me see if I have another date for you, Martin Aquarius. Is what is another? So that's September 15 for Saturn in um, Saturn Square Uranus. Okay, you already felt this shit by in the February season, so it's nothing new to you. Uh, what else? Venus will enter Virgo, so this could be you literally cleaning the house. So when Venus goes into Virgo, a lot of you may be getting rid of shit in the house or finally whatever getting if you're moving you're figuring that out um this could be like signing a lease when mercury goes into libra so you may have to go talk to the people like landlords and people like that um just fyi i want to put you onto game okay what else is a family member your dad's side of the family is quite triggered or highlighted for those that don't know uh, that are Aquariuses, so pay attention to that. And then September 10th is your full moon in Pisces, which is in the second house. So again, this is uh, well, this is going to be a positive change actually at your job again, or your daily routine. This is actually, you may actually get money because the full moon is happening in your second house and it's conjoining Neptune, sextiling Uranus. So if you've been creating or working from home, there might be some changes in that routine. Um, this could be literally like you start, the new moon could be like a new self-care thing you do with friends, going out to eat, something that you add to your daily routine. Or like maybe you start cooking more because this is part of the daily routine that you want to change, depending on your moon, obviously. So thank you very much. I love you. Let me see, did I give you all the dates? Uranus. What to do with Uranus and Aquarius? You're a uh, retrograde, excuse me. Um, you're always going through this, actually. So it's not a big deal for you. But it's just people, maybe the people that you, um, the old people that you were hanging out with come back. So if you were working out, they come back. Basically, that's really the tea. Nothing else. Let me see, nothing else? Yeah, nothing really major after that. Venus square Mars. Um, you're, f listen was that your this could be um, also by the way family could be feuding family so i just want you to know that like your boyfriend could be problems with your family or your boyfriend's or your life i'm actually saying boyfriend but your partner's schedule could be hindering your schedule and is not aligning so i hope that makes sense for you uh, let me know. Thank you. And Venus trying Uranus at September 19th, which you are already used to. Okay, I'm going to close it out here, Aquarius says, and I'll leave some things on YouTube, some dates for you to look out for. Thank you very much. I'll be back for part two with Pisces.